Hello everyone, this is part two of my Santa is Coming to Town uh, video, which I made uh, using images of Santa Claus or Saint Nick uh, that my friend Catherine Stenham painted um, actually years ago. And so it's a collection of her Santas um, and places Santa is visiting on Christmas Eve. Now, I was just talking about the old ways with Yule or Christmas tide, and how it was this period of, of life and death with the darkness um, and the bleakness of cold winter ahead. Crops could not be grown. Life could very easily um, be blown out uh, if circumstances were bad for people. And so people became very superstitious at this time as well. Um, card games, uh, seeing a fortune teller. These were common uh, activities during the Christmas tide celebrations or Yule. Um, the idea of, you know, would you survive until the next spring? Um, anything that could be foretold, uh, images watched in mirrors or looking in a bowl of water was another common activity because people felt they had no control of their future. And they didn't have science and technology the way we did today um, to try to make sense of the world and why things happen. But turning the page, we're back to a cheerful Christmas scene. Here I have two uh, beautiful flickers or woodpeckers um, on just on a jelly print that I had made. And here is another image uh, of Catherine's with Santa Claus. And for this page, I really tried to pick up the various colors and images in that coat of his. And so you'll see um, some of the oranges and, and sort of scarlet berries. Here I picked it up a little with a feather. Um, and again, this here and up here are bits torn from jelly prints uh, that were just the color I was looking for. And so here, Santa is skating along through the woods. And you have, again, just like the cover, the wildlife surrounding him uh, as he carries his toys to the next uh, village. And here uh, is more of a traditional American Santa Claus. Um, what we think of as Santa today in, in America was really developed um, through Clement Clark Moore's um, poem, Twas the Night Before Christmas. And in it, you know, he describes Santa so vividly. Um, but it also makes us wonder if he was aware of these different versions of Saint Nick. Because he does have Santa coming down the chimney. He does describe him as a right jolly uh, old elf. And, and he's very much American Santas are very... Um, chubby in their red coats and all. Um, and here we have in her, her image of Santa with the children here, they're visiting with him. And it says, don't you tell a single soul what I'm going to say. And so Santa is maybe telling them the secrets of how he travels. Here are some images of children in the snow. And so for children, you know, along with hanging their stocking on Christmas Eve, the idea of getting in touch with Santa, going and sitting on Santa's lap at the mall and telling him what you'd like for Christmas, well, that all evolved out of 
children early on being um, told, you know, Santa traveled through the chimney. And years and years ago, children would write letters, kind of late 1800s, early 1900s. They'd write letters to Santa. And they believed that the draft in the chimney would deliver the letter. And we know this because as old buildings have been torn apart throughout the years, think of especially in England and other parts of Europe and that area, every now and then an old Christmas letter has been found in a chimney, kind of tucked into the bricks where it was just a little uneven. And as they were taking the chimneys apart to, to tear the house down or whatever, they found Christmas letters that children had literally let the, the flu, the draft, take up to the through the chimney thinking it would be delivered to Santa that way. And so here's just an image of a child wrapping gifts. And this is a vintage Christmas card of a little girl talking with Santa on the phone and here also sending Christmas cards with him. And these are um, vintage um, postcards I found uh, in archives in the public domain. All I've done here is tucked it right behind Santa um, right there. All right, and moving on, then we turn the page, and here we have the boy uh, that Catherine painted skating. And I knew right away, you know, I wanted to find a page, not only the colors in the background to pick up just the reds and greens, but to fit the movement of his skating. And so I really tried to capture that feeling of movement and traveling and distance uh, in this one. And I have the lines, our hearts grow tender with childhood memories, because those are some of the sweetest memories, not necessarily even Christmas Day, but all of the excitement and energy of the holiday season leading up to um, Christmas. Here, I have another nature scene. This is a jelly print I made in the background. And it's just, again, um, a winter scene with nature and animals and Christmas berries. And here is an image of Catherine's, another St. Nick. Um, he might have been known as Sinterklaas if this was... Um, the Dutch in Holland, Santa Claus sounds a lot like Santa Claus, and we think that the stories of Santa Claus came over with Dutch immigrants in the 1600s. And if Clement Clark Moore was aware of Santa Claus, it does sound, like I said, a lot like Santa Claus, which is the more American version. Um, and so here we have him. And again, just images of nature. And I especially loved this black and white vintage uh, illustration I found in the public domain of a Saint Nick. And look at his body is like made of pine cones and wood. Um, he's more of a stern Santa, which was more common. Um, Americans have always had sort of a jolly Santa Claus. But it was very common, like I talked about with the Protestant Reformation and Rue Claus, um, throughout Europe and England, um, Santas were, or St. Nick, were much sterner looking. And if Rue Claus wasn't along, sometimes Santa even carried a switch, which is, you know, branches um, for like a whipping for a naughty child. And so this one reminds me of kind of that stern European looking um, Santa. And he's out in the woods. 
And so turning it over here, we have a two-page spread just again uh, to capture the excitement of the season. Uh, Catherine painted these two young people. They're skating and they've been Christmas shopping. And so here I have some beautiful paper from Dreams Etc. Uh, Jen Bishop is the creator of those. And um, it the calendar here and the images were perfect for this sort of shopping scene. But I also have the little squirrel there. Uh, he's, he's the rebel at heart there. And it says, become a child again at Christmas time. And it's easy to do that, especially when you have um, smaller children, younger children in your life. This is another skating Santa that Catherine painted. And here we have the beautiful details she worked into his coat. And he has ice skates. And this is old book binding from a book that I gutted. And it's, it's what the pages are literally like glued into. The signatures are glued or stitched into. But it has wonderful texture to it. And it says, again, this one sort of uh, focused again, just like this one here on the Christmas shopping, on the commercial side of Christmas, which Coca-Cola uh, really used um, the, the modern American view of Santa uh, to promote their product. And we certainly have Santa on plenty of other things that we buy for the Christmas season. And so here are just old ads and, and things relating to that. And there is that sneaky little mouse again. And it says, who goes there on this night? And here, another two-page spread. And uh, Catherine sent me this beautiful image of the mother with her children and they're skating and I put her with the moon above and um, this is a metallic paint that I use to capture that feel of the ice and the, the icy snow beneath her feet um, on this night. Uh, this moon, just an aside, is actually from a crystal ball that um, the graphics fairy has. And I just cut off the little base of the crystal ball because I love using this particular image as a moon in uh, the reflection of the night sky. And so there you have that. And then we have a page of some angels and this is an angel that Catherine painted and um, I've just, again, really tried to work with the colors, um, the soft greens and rosy pinks um, and all, just this fresh, very pure um, joy of Christmas time. And then, again, another page that's very similar to those other ones about Christmas shopping. And here we have a woman whose her skirts have suddenly been blown up in front of her with a gust of wind or more likely some more little troublemakers. These mice have just run beneath her feet and startled her. But again, maybe she's out Christmas shopping um, or going to the library or something and those mice are mischief making. They're having their own version of Christmas. One other thing, this is just a doily I added to the skirt when I just folded a doily over to get that ruffle effect. And we're nearing the end here. Uh, we have another image of Santa riding his horse. Um, and Catherine painted this one beautifully with the purple uh, coat and the um, goldish yellow um, lining and I've just sprinkled silver in there to pick up the light 
and I just surrounded him with images of of the the child's joy of Christmas toys. This is an old car to play in, like a metal toy car, candy, children making snowmen, puzzles and games, and fruit and nuts and candy. And so you can see. And these are just um, scrapbook papers that I added my own stenciling and paint to just to kind of uh, draw out more color and interest in it. And if you can see the gold on that page shimmering as well. And so turning the page, uh, here we have parents that I imagined were looking in on their ch children or child sleeping maybe the night before Christmas. They had maybe just finished putting away or putting out all of the toys that Santa would have brought. And here you can see the child asleep and maybe dreaming of Santa's visit and toys and books and candy, of course, maybe a toy ship even um, that the child would like for Christmas morning. And another one of those sneaky little mice. And here it just says holiday spirit. And we have this beautiful orange slice with cinnamon uh, on there as well. And this beautiful, uh, many of the, the um, trims I have used um, come from a tattered dream online. A tattered dream. And then we move to this page. And I learned in doing research just around different traditions with Santa around the world that in Greece, at least years ago, the Greeks would decorate ships in the harbor with lights and, and decorations, almost like we in America, at least, say, would decorate a tree. And so they'd really decorate the ships and all. And children would carry toy ships around with them at Christmas time um, and caroling and singing and hoping for treats of, of again, gifts of, of food and drink as well as little bits of change that they would then save to use to buy a Christmas bread on um, New Year's Eve. And here, Catherine Santa down here, I've put him again on some book binding here. And um, just, again, reminders that he's traveled the world. The Greeks also would crack open a pomegranate on New Year's Eve as a sign of good luck, hoping for a year of good luck. And so there you have that. And so finally, on to the last page here. Um, this one, I really tried to pick up these beautiful teal colors in Catherine's coat she painted for Santa. And um, here is a big mailbox, the little mouse again. And here I just used black and white images of children and the Christmas tree. And this is actually an old photograph of a little girl typing a letter to Santa with her kitty on her lap. And it's a toy cat. But she's, she's letting uh, Santa know her thoughts maybe on what she received for Christmas. Maybe it's a thank you note or what she would like for this Christmas. We're not sure. And it says St. Uh, Nicholas... Lean your ear this way. So she's got something to say. Uh, and by this time, she's not sending it up the chimney. She's typing it out. Uh, and I would suppose mailing it to Santa Claus. And here, though, again, uh, I've just surrounded him with the flowers to pick up the colors and that celebration. And finally, here at the very end, we have, and I'm going to bring it in just a little, we have a, an image of St. Nick here. And I used um, paper from Stamparia uh, with an Asian theme uh, because 
in my research of, of this holiday, I found that the Japanese, and I don't know if this is currently um, something they do, but at least years ago, would clean out the whole house. Um, like we would say in America, a spring cleaning. But they did this for the new year. And it was cleaning out any clutter and and dust from the previous year to make the house clean for good luck in the new year. And I had this little image, this graphic of this little bird sweeping. And so I've used that because she's using the broom to represent the sweeping, sweeping out the old and bringing in the new is, is another way of looking at it. Um, and over here, then again, nature um, is a, a big part of uh, Japanese beliefs and, and uh, values um, in their life. And so I tried to just surround um, Santa with the beauty of the natural world as well. And again, Catherine had painted this one. So here we have a frog, we have birds down here, and the squirrel, and our little bird woman here cleaning out the old. So there you have it, many different images and faces of Santa and the traditions that began before we even called him Santa with the celebration of Yule and the um, um, evolution of Christmas Tide and the real man Saint Nick, who evolved into our our classic American Santa Claus. I hope you've enjoyed this. I so enjoyed working on this um, this visual book for my friend Catherine Stenham, and I want to thank her for giving me this opportunity to you know, to trust me with her images, her beautiful art, and to use it um, in a new way, um, bringing it to life in a different setting. Um, so thank you, Catherine. And even though right now I'm filming in September, I hope the uh, goodwill of St. Nicholas and the holiday season um, keeps you happy and safe throughout your year. Goodbye.